Hey everybody, this is Elizabeth with Live Simple, Live Free. And uh, I'm going to just do some more planting here today. And I'm going to be working in the one where Bill's got this beautiful like cage on the top all done. So here we go. It's pretty cool for me to open it. Um, I, just, I just lift up right here. And I'm going to go to the other side. And I'll just show you. Slick, huh? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, I am going to be doing some planting in here today. Um, this has been a real learning process for me because I am pretty sure I think I started my other plants a little earlier than I really realized in terms of when the weather was going to be warm enough. So by the time I got them out here and I hardened them off like you're supposed to and put them in the garden, I don't think that they were doing real great anymore. I think they were kind of what they call spindly. And so what I'm going to do is keep giving them a chance to see if they can grow, but I'm going to go ahead and plant some other seeds also because, I mean, the, the best thing that could happen would be if everything starts growing and then I just have to thin it out. That would be no big deal. So one of the things I'm going to be planting, and I've got my trowel here and my map, but one of the things I'm going to be planting um, are cucumbers. This is bed A. And uh, I'm kind of excited because I got some seeds from my friend Lynn that has a really cool farm. Oh boy, another jet coming by. get my my map out I have a map of my garden plot here helps me keep track of what I'm doing I am NOT going to get discouraged if something doesn't go perfectly that's how you learn and I will definitely get something growing in here without a shadow of a doubt our grass is coming up now which is nice <laughs> okay so just gonna be a matter of digging up some places and putting in some seeds. This soil is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay. Now these are going to go right in this whole corner here. Going to be my cucumber. Wow, it, I've got some oregano here, and the oregano does look like it's coming up. And so is my basil over in the other bed. So that's encouraging. <laughs> Should I move the camera forward because you're way out? Yeah, at this point you can bring it farther forward. Sure, turn it off and then we can put it back on again. All right, I've got my great claw tool here. And I just dig this beautiful, dark, soft earth up being very careful not to dig up my oregano, which is right here. Uh, this is looking beautiful. All right, I'm gonna get some cucumbers planted here. For Christmas from Barry's family, I got this, I think it was this trowel. Anyway, I got some wonderful garden gloves. And at some point, I really will use them. I really will, but right now I love just feeling the earth and just working with it with my hands. I'm trying to pay attention as much as I can to making sure there's no way this is just way too early for the cucumber, but I don't think it is. 
I feel the earth move <laughs> under my fingers. <laughs> I feel the sky t tumbling down. Uh, not right now, sky. <laughs> tumbling down. All right. So, get a, get a nice patch of cucumber here. Now, I have had quite a few people asking about this uh, mason, these mason blocks leaching stuff into the soil or causing problems. Um, and I've been putting a lot of thought into this and I had a really good long talk with Molly too. The, tr the truth is, um, it is always going to be wetter in here than it is out here. And when it rains, you can see the outside of these blocks become nice and saturated. So osmosis is probably going to cause moisture to be wicking away from the soil rather than into the soil. So I'm really not too worried about the, the blocks causing um, any real problems. I think that there's going to be a tendency for moisture to be um, like working its way out. And also we've got all that gravel underneath there. Um, and so if something is trickling down the wall, it's got like a French drain under it. Um, so I, I really think that probably that's not going to be too much of an issue. And of course, it's all, once again, a learning experience. I'll see. But we really didn't feel like that we were going to have a lot of problems with things leaching in. Because there's going to be more of a tendency for this to be drying things out and coming out. And of course, I do need to make sure that I'm keeping this soil really lovely and moist. You know, of course I will. All right. So I'm going to put some of these cucumber seeds in. Oh, here we go. Just make a kind of a nice patch here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, she tends to like hang on to her seeds and propagate, you know, year after year, which is what I, I would really, that's my goal is to be able to do that. And uh, so that way you're just, your garden is reproducing itself year after year, which is a really good thing. All right, so let's just get some cucumber going here. This is lovely soil. Oh my goodness. I'm just, I just feel like that these little seeds are just going to be taking a deep breath and going, yeah. <laughs> so my little cucumber place. Now, if these need more room, um, they, you know, because they can get good deep roots and everything. I will, um, you know, I'll thin them out to make sure that what is growing well is going to have all the room it needs. So I'm going to start with planting that much, I think, of the cucumber seeds. And uh, we'll see how they come up. I found this apron that I got years ago in the Outer Banks. And um, it's kind of a handy, um, handy gardening apron. So that's cool. All right, my oregano is looking decently good. Wow, okay. These look like rocks, but they're not. They just crumble up into lovely dirt. <laughs> All righty, you guys doing okay? All right. Okay, well, I'm just gonna keep planting and then I will kind of show you what I've been doing. And then I'll give it just a really lovely drink. Alrighty, let's see how it goes. Um, this one has got my little map here. I got onion and some romaine and a mescaline mix. It's not time to plant the asparagus yet. I got cauliflower and broccoli, cabbage and Brussels sprouts, spinach, cucumber, and a little bit of oregano coming up over here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my cage back down and then I got more planting and other beds to do, but I'm going to go ahead and give this one a nice, gentle drink and uh, just see how these guys do. So here comes the other side. Easy peasy. Woo!
There we go, and I'll give them a drink. Oh, please grow, 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 guys. Okay, I am gonna be working on this bed now, and I know Bill doesn't have the cage on it yet, but it will be, and this is gonna be root vegetables. I can plant- I'm working I, on it, I, I'm working on it. <laughs> he is, he's working hard. <laughs> but this is gonna be root vegetables. Um, my sweet potatoes are getting slips on them now that look really good, but I gotta wait a little longer because sweet potatoes have to really be planted into warm dirt. Um, but the rest of this, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and by the time these root vegetables are really sprouting, um, Bill will have the cage on here. So I'm just rustling this all up a little bit. This bed hasn't really been worked for, the, for me yet, and getting it all kind of slicked out, and I'm going to be planting, let me see here, um, well, eventually sweet potatoes when they get all ready. Pretty soon I'm going to be able to get the slips gently broken off of the potato part and put those in water until they root, and then that's what you plant. And my gardening buddy, my farmer buddy, Lynn, told me that if you, uh, with sweet potatoes, if we tried to just, like, just stick the piece of sweet potato in the ground, it would grow a plant, but not necessarily more sweet potatoes. But she said, if I just grow the slip, which is the sprout that's rooted, and I get that growing, then that should be producing sweet potatoes very well for me. So this is going to have parsnips, beets, carrots, turnips, and my sweet potatoes. So, yep, so I'm excited. So let me get this all kind of ruffled up and then I'll kind of show you uh, what I'm doing with this one. Have I told you how much I love working in a garden that I can reach? <laughs> Man, this is so cool. All right. Now I've got parsnip seeds right here in this trench. And now I've just gently covered them. There we go. So here I have got um, carrots and beets and turnips and parsnips. And then fully half of this bed, I'm gonna try to get some healthy, healthy sweet potatoes going and just try to keep them growing. Um, Molly told me that when I harvest these vegetables, which I, you know, they'll harvest sooner, I can start bringing my sweet potato plants over and covering them in some dirt and just get a really sprawling patch of sweet potatoes, which I would love. And then when those get ready to be harvested, I can start with a fall crop of these other root vegetables. So I'll see how that works out this year. So now I have planted on um, this entire bed, except for the sweet potatoes. And like I said, their slips are getting about that long and I'll have to get them rooted, but I have to wait a little bit longer to plant the sweet potatoes because they need to be in genuinely warm soil. So they're they're growing inside for now. Um, this height on these beds has worked out perfectly for me. I can stand and work without any big issues. Um, very comfortable. I can reach everywhere to the middle without any issues. I've been planting with no problems. Um, the dirt has been settling. Um, that's not a bad thing. It's still plenty deep for these plants. In fact, these root vegetables are gonna love it. Um, and I don't mind because it's still a good height and settling like that means that next year when we want to put in some more compost and kind of re-enrich the dirt, the soil, um, it's, we're not going to have to take any out. It'll kind of just keep settling as that uh, hugel culture, as the wood in there continues to break down and we'll just be able to add it on top. I think that's going to work out really well. So yes, my root, my root bed here and um, like I said, I'll be putting in sweet potatoes. And uh, Bill's going to, I'm sure, have this covered and all built and everything long before these guys are really coming up and needing the protection. So, yay! Now, over here, I went ahead. I've got some herbs growing over here, but I'm going to have a nice big place here, and I started some pumpkins. Now, this is the fourth and final bed, and I went ahead and left a big section, a third of it, at the opposite end that's going to be the, the uh, straight neck squash, because that really sprawls. And I've got one more, like a lovely little scallop summer squash. And then I have three winter squashes that are going to be coming in over here. Spaghetti squash and an acorn squash and, oh, one other. <laughs> but anyway, that'll be winter squash there. So I've got this one planted now too. So I think right now that's everything that it's okay to plant this time of year. I better get everybody a nice drink. I love this watering wand that Bill got for me. It has mist and 
spray and all sorts of things so I can do a real gentle job doing a lot of watering just as this stuff's getting started. So I'm going to put it on mist right now. And I'm not going to get my husband wet. Don't get me wet. <laughs> oh, I just put a kink in the hose. All right. <laughs> there, I got the kink out. We're going to just have to get a better one. So, give everybody a nice, gentle drink. So here are four of my sweet potatoes and you can see that the slopes are growing really nicely out the top and there's roots growing out the bottom. Uh, I'm supposed to wait until they're about six inches long and then just start putting them in some water to grow roots. And I'm hoping then, you know, my ground should be warm enough that they should do quite well. I am really deliberately going to try to grow quite a crop of sweet potatoes if I can. So they're doing great. I really enjoy doing all that planting today. I got all the dirt scrubbed out from under my nails and <laughs> my hands all clean. What I'm doing now is making records now of exactly what I've done, when I planted these things. On each one of the little packets, I am putting on the packet itself. For instance, the turnips planted outside. This is now the 28th of April. And um, so they're all labeled. But also, um, I have this little book, which is a very good recommendation by my daughter-in-law, Molly. And I love that I found this. Um, it says, collect moments, not things. I thought that was so cool. And um, I'm keeping a log now of, of what I'm doing with gardening. Um, I, I'm going to be putting in here, you know, what we put into the beds, um, what we have put in there. I put in there the things that I planted ahead that ended up, I think I might have done them too early or I don't know, maybe didn't um, harden them off quite properly. But anyway, I, a record of all of that and that they got kind of long and spindly and didn't survive transplanting very well when the dirt when it got warm enough. So my basil and oregano might still grow. So it's all part of the learning process. So it's warm enough now that I went ahead and just replanted all this stuff um, and did it out in the garden. And um, I'll see how it does coming up. I'll just keep an eye on it. And if all else fails at some point, if I just can't get something going that I'd like to grow, I will find the plant somewhere. But I'm trying to get this going from seeds as much as I can, or from, you know, cuttings like on the sweet potatoes. So, a record here of how my slips are growing with the sweet potatoes, and then a careful record for uh, bed A, bed B, bed C, and bed D of everything that I planted today. And then I have this very important chart, this map, that shows where I'm planting everything. So, as of right now, I've got everything planted that I can at this point. Um, my sweet potatoes are going to have to wait. Um, well, for one thing, I want these slips to start rooting, but the ground has to be very dependably warm. And right now, I don't think we're going to have any more frost at all, but I just I need to wait a little bit longer on my sweet potatoes. Um, my watermelon and my honeydew have to be a little later in the season. Um, this says, like, you know, May and June, so this is just not quite there yet. I'll probably get these going in about two weeks. That should be the very possible last even thinking about frost date. And then my summer squash, I've got an early bush scallop and a straight neck. Those also need to go in a little later. So I'm going to go ahead and, and plant those a little bit later. I've got it right here. And then I got tomato seeds, heirloom tomato seeds, but we're growing regular plants this year. But I've got these seeds to have for later. Okay, so um, a real quick rundown of what I planted today. I replanted um, onions, the mesclun greens mix, romaine lettuce, cucumber, now using my, my friend Lynn's um, cucumber seeds. I'm excited about those coming up. Broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. I replanted a little bit of parsley, but it's looking like my oregano and basil are still coming up. For the first planting, I did plant some Brussels sprouts and spinach. I got my pumpkins planted. And like I said, you're supposed to put them on kind of a mound, but that, that is a deep, fluffy bunch of dirt. I don't think I need to mound them in there. And then I, f I did my first planting now in my bed C of the buttercup winter squash, spaghetti squash, and the table queen acorn squash. I'm looking forward to that. 
and then I'm going to leave a good section of the bed in, in, in bed D for my sweet potatoes and then I went ahead and planted, this is my root veggies, carrots, turnips, beets, and parsnips. So that's what I put in today and um, I'll try to, you know, make sure they're getting watered well and Bill is continuing to put the cages over the top. By the time any of these are really coming up, um, he'll have the cages done. He's put a lot of work into that. So I already sprinkled and watered and, and um, I'll just keep an eye on them and pretty soon start trying to root these, um, the cuttings, you know, from the sweet potatoes. So anyway, I'm enjoying it. The height is perfect. Um, this is really amazing for me. So anyway, thanks for going along with me and they, I don't know, we'll have to see what grows and what I have to learn, but I'm going to try to give this stuff the best shot I possibly can. So, all right. Well, thank you. Um, and I'd once again appreciate my daughter-in-law. Um, letting me use their kitchen garden book and this, of course, this um, square foot gardening book. And um, so I appreciate that. And um, anyway, all right, I love you guys. Live simple, live free. And um, I love you and be blessed. And we'll see you later.